my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I'm a homosexual, I'm a lesbian, okay. I think I'm pregnant with Lady Sam's child, yeah, that's, that's how it works. They say it's scientifically impossible, but it's an immaculate conception. Mon and Sam, oh, finally smashed, they finally smashed. It's been a long journey, but we're finally here. I can't stop crying. We did it, kids. Oh my god, this episode was wild from beginning to end, and I am now deceased. This is my ghost speaking to you. I died of homosexual causes. Cause of death, gap, episode eight. I don't even know where to start. Like, I, 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 I this episode was wild from beginning to end. Like, it, it just, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, I have some notes, I have some gay notes. So, to start with, Mon getting into bed in that nightgown, I mean... No wonder Sam has one thing on her mind. You can't blame the woman, you, you just can't. The way that Sam, like, breathes Mon in in this scene had me shaking, it had me crying, it had me throwing up. This scene was so sensual and intimate. Portrait of a lady on fire was found bold and shivering in a ditch. Oh my god, it was so like, just so intimate. And then Sam just like rolls over to go to sleep. Just, just okay. Unrealistic, unrealistic, but okay. No wonder Mon can't sleep. Like if Sam had been on top of me like that and then just like peaced out, I would, I would be up all night possibly sobbing, possibly sobbing, but they watch a show about lions mating instead and did you know some lions are actually gay well bisexual but we we support bisexual queens and kings on this channel despite what you've heard we need to talk about the nails i know that jim kind of points out the nails later in this episode but yeah no yeah no i think the nails are the reason sam like rolled over and tried to go back to sleep she did not want a trip to the a and e it's literally a safety hazard it's it's not good when i watched this episode for the first time i was like why are they so like awkward with each other i mean it's like when bet and tina had like bed death in season one of the L word. I just kind of wasn't buying it, you know? It was just unrealistic. It was just unrealistic, but as the episode like unfolds, you begin to understand why both Sam and Mon are so like hesitant to make a move on one another. Like it does get explained in the episode because at first I was like, how, how are you resisting with that level of chemistry? But T explains to Mon that like, Sam has trouble making the first move because of her upbringing and being kind of like told what to do by her grandmother all the time so she doesn't really do what she wants to do and Sam also says she's never like done anything like this before which maybe like plays into it and it is just like it could just be so intense that it's overwhelming and both of them are scared so I did kind of like understand that a bit more as the episode unfolded and Mon was hesitant to make a move because she feels like she's kind of have done a lot of the legwork already and she'd quite like Sam to like you know suck it up and you know which yeah 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 what is realistic in this episode is the workplace gossip. That was just, that was literally like watching a reality show. That was, no, I mean, that was just like watching real life. That is like literally how it is. 110%, they nailed that. That's gossip and rumors, 100%, 100%. Jim is so funny in this episode. Like Nam always has me in stitches, but Jim in this episode, oh my gosh. She's like 110% committed to mono and Sam smashing like that is her calling in life that is why she gets out of bed in the morning you know ah <sighs> so Sam tries to make it up to Mon somewhat with some snacks which what woman can't be won over with snacks I'd, I'd just like to know there's not much I wouldn't forgive for some snacks that there, there's not I was feeling the snack kiss I was feeling the snack kiss I think it's one of my favorite kisses of theirs so far from this season. I don't know why I loved it so much. It was just, there was a lot of heat behind it. You know, I just, I liked it. Then the mission is almost complete when they attempt to like smash on the staircase, but Sam has a nosebleed because it's intense. It's just intense. Sometimes lesbianism will give you a nosebleed. That's why they, they warn you away from it. 
Oh no. Anyway, Jim has had it. She's had enough. She resorts to getting them a bottle of whiskey. She says if that doesn't work, she's going to take them through it step by step. So I'd like to know a bit about Jim's like history. Jim's visited Christmas Town a few times herself. Okay. Jim is like a lesbian guardian angel this episode. She's a lesbian guardian angel and she calls out the nails. Jim just says what all of us have been thinking. Please take the nails off. Please, please. It, it's for everybody's well-being, you know? Anyway, the whiskey helps. It helps. And third time is a charm. Or luck comes in threes. Uh, third time lucky? Mm. So it finally happens. It finally, oh my god, it finally happened. And it was so intimate and so sensual. It was so intense. Mon looked absolutely lost in the lesbian source. She was lost. She was gone. Girl was gone. That was not the whiskey. That was the lesbianism. Oh my god. When Sam kisses her hand, I that was when the immaculate conception happened for me and I'm, I'm now carrying Sam's child. That That's okay. And what I love about this scene is like, it's not graphic or explicit at all and yet it kind of really kind of gets the point across and just, oh my god, it's so good. Oh my god, and when Mon said her name, when Mon said her name, oh, oh my god, oh, oh my god. I just know that fans are sending like flowers and gifts to Freem Beck's like P.O. box right now, like I, I just know that that's the score. Also like their post smash smiles are so adorable, it's, oh my god, they're so soft and oh my god, they're just so adorable. They really fed us good this episode, like they, they really, I was, I was nourished, okay that's weird. I think it's understandable that Sam posted an update on Facebook saying that she'd like smashed, smashed Mon. That's like fire sign energy for sure. I love that she also like brags to Mon about the fact that she like slept with Mon. Like she just, she just like, she, the girl's just like on cloud nine. Let the woman share her achievements. I mean, she's happy. She's happy. Then Mon gets in her feelings about betraying Kirk and this is where the drama starts. This is where it gets turbulent turbulent. Kirk has been like keyboard fighting online with Sam, but Sam doesn't know that it's Kirk behind the keyboard and Kirk's only just found out that it's like Sam and he is like shaking in his boots. And he asks Mon to like keep this a secret and she obviously feels really torn. But then Sam overhears like her employees gossiping about a possible affair between Kirk and Mon and she confronts Mon. I have to say like Mon lies to Sam very very smoothly, like that's, wow. If you have to bury a body with someone, Mon is who you want to do it with. Woman can keep a secret, you know? And of course like Mon has her reasons for like lying to Sam. She's in a bit of a position, but one thing leads to another and when she bumps into Kirk again, Sam like appears from nowhere and is just ready to throw down. I mean, she just goes for Kirk. And is that level of jealousy like, a little bit toxic, yeah, but the V has her... When the V is just that good, you're gonna be crying and throwing hands. That That's just... it's just science. And I think the thing with Sam is, like, she doesn't trust or love someone very easily, so when she does develop those feelings, it's so, like, overwhelming and intense for her that I think it's understandable that she'd like act out in this way and like Sam is very layered. Like we, we've we seen her backstory, we know why she is the way she is and therefore some of her more like toxic behavior is like understandable and really I just felt bad for like the both of them at the end of this episode. Like it was just so heartbreaking because you can see Mon's like really hurt and you can see that Sam's like lashing out at her because she's also hurt and it's just, it's, it's, it's really like, oh no, oh no. But I'm not too sad about it because I think next episode they're probably gonna make it up and next episode looks absolutely like wild and I can't wait. I think it's gonna be good. Freen and Becky did such a fantastic job this episode. I mean, they went through like the range of emotions and they always bring it to this show. Do you know, I like, ah, oh, I love them so much. I love them so much. Oh my God. Okay guys, if you've seen episode eight of Gap, which 
I mean, I'm sure you've at least seen some of it. Let me know what you thought of it down in the comments section below. If you want to support lesbian content and women's voices, come and join the Sapphic Underground Club. I'll say a little prayer for you. Women's voices, okay. Goodbye. <laughs>